nice view. Yes, it is. Oh, I'm jealous. My view is the, uh, you know, wrong This is the story of a man side. named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. Yeah, that's working out. This is what employee 427 did every day, every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say, It was Saturday. Never in all his years That's of the excuse. company oh, had this, to work on Saturday. this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. You should move. Oh. <laughs> uh, this is to move. Oh. Trey, if this, like, kills me... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. This is creepy. Just a, just a little bit. You miss Stanley. <laughs> yeah, Trey. Something could pop out of me. I swear to God. Trey, don't when play. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. That's my right, so this is my left. <laughs> and you do or do not have to listen to the narrator. Just letting you know. Okay, well, I don't know what I'm doing, so should I? This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Yeah. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Stanley. Stanley. Darn it. Damn it, Stanley. <laughs> Trey, I'm scared. <laughs> Trey, this isn't funny. Trey. <laughs> Trey, what the hell? I cannot tell you what's in this game. Or Trey, what it's about. Trey, quit Just playing. complete the Stanley Parable. That's all I ask. Trey, I hate you. <laughs> yes, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Trey, I'm scared. Trey. <laughs> makes you feel better. This isn't a horror game. Oh, Trey, I hate you. <laughs> oh, I don't like this. Damn it, Stanley. Stanley! <gasps> Damn it. Damn it, Stanley. There we go. Stanley's pissing me off. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret. There's no keypad behind you. Two, eight, Four, five. Since he could never possibly okay. know that the combination was 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code okay. by sheer luck. Let, Amazing. Let me in. Maybe he stepped up. into the newly opened passageway. Look around. Is there anything different? Oh! You're expecting something to pop out at you, aren't you? Yes. 
Is something going to pop out at me? I don't know. At least tell me that much. Figure out the Stanley Parable, friend. Oh, Trey, I hate you. <laughs> Trey, I'm getting scared. Okay, like, there's always scary stuff. Like, like, is something is scary going to happen? Because I, I don't, don't want to throw this and break it. it. And that could happen. <laughs> Please don't break my controller, then. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Try once something scary happens, I'm done. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm gonna die. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that Mind read control. Mind Control. Or there was the escape, but wait, you pass. If you look to your left, see that escape. So should I escape? Do whatever you want. You can Trey. This is your choice. I'm just letting you know. I saw that. Can go into the mind control facility. Well, the narrator said they're gonna mind control. Trey, I don't know what to do. Trey, I don't know. <laughs> Make whatever choice you want. Trey, it's good complain. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm a black person. What would a black person do in this situation? <laughs> Stanley walked straight ahead through mind the large control. door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Oh, I don't know if I can handle this. Because he just said he was going to meet his violent death. Nope. Meet my violent death? I don't think so. Try something scary. I'm going to get away. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Why is he doing this? Find out. Trey, this hallway is not ending. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. This is scary. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Where do you find these kind of games? Uh, now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Come on, you got this. Come on, Mark. Stanley's pissing me off. <laughs> no, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. <laughs> what the fuck am I <laughs> Life in someone else's control? Never. This narrator. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? How am I was arm? it even possible? Oh, Had he narrator. truly spent his entire life utterly He's blind to the world? <laughs> You're stuck. <laughs> I don't like the sound. I don't like the music. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, What's oh, it on? Oh. You didn't just activate the control. No. Trey, what's going on? After they kept enslaved all these Trey. years. No. Ago, 
Look up and around. Can you look anywhere? As the machine whirred into motion, and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. So he resigned and willingly accepted oh, the violent end to his brief and shallow life. I kept you enslaved all these years, no. you know, and you tried to take control of the machine for yourself. No, is that what you wanted? I thought that's what I was supposed to do. Oh, so you're supposed to turn the mind control on? I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to <laughs> understand. After you were being mind so controlled? That machine can do. I was so you bored. I just didn't have to Turn the controls off and leave. If you want to throw loading my story off track, you're going to have to do much better well, it's than that. loading now. I'm afraid you don't it. have nearly the power you think you do. Well, it's right example, behind you all the time. And I believe you'll find Maybe this pertinent. Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. Oh my god. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, yeah, where I go? detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. Wait, I'm about to die? Long until detonation then. Oh hmm, hell no. Let's say um, Get me the fuck out of here. Two minutes. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Oh, I'm dead. This is it. I guess you keep walking forward. I can't walk forward, I tried. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Wait, was that credits? I'm sorry. Oh, that's credits that people made the game. Huh. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Oh God, it's not over. It's not over. I swear it's not over. I don't know if you won or not. Um, so what did the narrator say? Did the narrator say- He said I died. Oh. Well, that's not good. Oh, turn right. Maybe down that way. There we go. <sighs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Oh, dear me. What's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're Shut supposed up. to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you it's saw big that red timer button. that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on oh, every little code. thing in this room. Wait, these numbered where... buttons. No, these colored ones. Where's or maybe the code? this big red button. Or this door. Never Everything, mind, anything. Failed. Something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video the game can be beaten? Problem solved? Do you have oh. any idea what your purpose in this place Wait, is? Wait, what was the code? Do you remember? It was like 2548? Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control Where's this world, four? that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No. This is weird. Not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. 
Oh, she jump to your right. Press quit. No I don't know if I can Oh, is, can you get over there? As as you oh, there's a way down. Oh, wait, right, no. I can't move. Stop now. Be your only true choice. Oh, I think it's trying to say stop before you die. I think you're about to die. I died. I couldn't move. Huh. Take a look at the clock stand. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. Shit, shit, 30 shit, shit, seconds shit. until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just I won't die. Blow it's the time. Will you cling desperately to ah. Or will you let go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count. What was it? Train 2, 5, or 4, all the same to me. All a part of the joke. You have to get close. And believe me, I will be laughing at every right. second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade what was it? until the moment I say happily ever up. He had defeated the machine, unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path What's going before on? him. What have you done this to me? was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Jim, what's going on? I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Thank you for being a Stanley Parable. What the hell? And being part of this experiment. 